Today I'm going to share my experience of visiting Turkish government hospital. It is located on the edge between Konyalti and Murat Pasha in Antalya, near the stadium. If you've never been to Turkish government hospital, this is going to be an adventure. A friend of mine, as I told you before, is applying for Turkish citizenship. In order to get Turkish citizenship, one, to have, one has to pass medical examination. First, you will turn your documents into Nufus, which is Population Control Office. And after that, you're going to pass some medical examination, and it has to be government hospital. You will be given a list of doctors which you're supposed to visit, like nine of them. And they are in different places. They are on the first floor, on the second floor, on the third floor, and in different wings and everywhere. But let's do one step at a time, because there is so much to talk about. I never seen anything like that. This particular hospital, in my opinion, something in between uh, college campus and uh, airport. There are so many people there, and they are all the time there. It's incredible. The adventure starts from the parking. The parking is incredibly different from anything you've seen in the Western countries or probably anywhere else. Uh, the territory is pretty large, but it's not paved. It's There are some parts which are paved. Uh, the one which we parked was not paved. It is still the same territory. It is the territory of the hospital. And there is a parking there. It's not paved. And two days ago and a day ago, we had rain. So puddles are everywhere. The, there is no line. There are no lines. There is no way to figure out where you're supposed to park or where you're not supposed to park. And people park everywhere. The way I would describe it, expect something like of a county fair where it's just a field and dirt and cars are, cars are piled everywhere. We managed to park, by the way. It's not easy, but you can manage park. And I can tell you, when you drive there, cars are parked so tightly. You really have maybe 20 centimeters between cars. Uh, and how you get in and how you get out, it's, it's a skill. I'm not criticizing, it's just how it is. There is so much demand. I think it could be managed better, but that's... That's what we faced, and obviously I'm not the one who managed it. There are other people who actually paid for that. Once you get out and you go into hospital, it is huge campus, as I said, and there is there are some signs. You can look at those signs, and if you speak Turkish, you can probably figure something out. Also, I think you will still have difficulty. And if you don't speak Turkish, make sure that you have somebody who speaks Turkish, because... People really don't have time for you, and some of them are short-tempered, so you have to be prepared for that. If you have somebody who speaks Turkish, it's better to have somebody who is very determined, active, and assertive, because there is another adventure there. First of all, you have a list of nine doctors to visit, and you have to find them. If you've been to escape room, and escape rooms right now popular around the world, or some people call it quest, this is it. This is the ultimate quest. Because you have to find everything, you have to find a way to get into the uh, office, you have to find a way to talk to the doctor, uh, everything is a uh, quest. And there are information desks, but there are very few of them, and usually they don't tell you exactly where to go. They sort of like point you in direction, ah, just go over there, somewhere there. And then you are on your merry way to find it. Once you found the office and I'm going to put some pictures in this video so you can see what is going on there. Uh, you will have to find a way into the office. By the way, this examination costs you 50 bucks and you pay it before anything starts. It doesn't matter if you have insurance, government insurance, such as a friend of mine, there was insurance which is paid monthly. This particular examination is not covered by insurance. This particular examination is out-of-pocket expense. So you pay $50 for this quest, and then you go on your quest. And what has happening by the doctor's office, I think the best way to describe it is just the Grand Bazaar. You have few people who actually registered for examination. They have a virtual line. In some places, they would have a ticket which you will get. And with that ticket, you have a line and you will be called in. In most places, it's not the case. You have maybe 30 or 40 people in front of the office. And there is very small waiting area and it's really hot. And right now it's December. I cannot even imagine what it will be in the summer. But it's December and it's really hot. In corridors, it's comfortable. But once you get into these corridors which lead into the offices, it's pretty hot. 
you have these people and the doctor, I feel for doctor, I'm not blaming anybody, I'm just telling you how it is. You have doctors and those doctors have seven minutes to devote to each patient which comes in the virtual line. Then you have other people, such as friend of mine, which have to go through the quest to get the signature of the doctor. They're not sick, they just need to have doctor ask them a question, can you see? Yeah, okay, then you're good. Uh, can you walk? Yes, you're good. Uh, do you have any problems? No, I don't. You're good. And that's pretty much it. It usually takes, once you get into the office, it takes less than a minute to finish the whole process. But to get to the office, it's not very easy. Uh, and you, you are, there are other people who are like you. They may have a different reason for medical examination, maybe for their job, maybe for whatever that is. But they go through the same thing. They're not sick. And then you have a bunch of other people who are seriously ill, and they go through overall examination, perhaps to enter the hospital, to check into the hospital. I don't know what the issue is. They have different problems. It may be some uh, broken bones. It may be uh, some other issues. But they still have to go and visit the uh, eye doctor and ear doctor and physical therapy, whatever that is. On the top of that, that's not all. You have gendarmes which bring some supposedly people who are under arrest. And they also have to get in and often they get without any line. They're like in priority. And they, like three of them accompany one person and it's all over that hospital. So all of these people come to the office and they all come to the doctor. Poor doctors, I don't know how they manage that. And then 12 o'clock comes. Sometimes 15 to 12, 15 to noon, sometimes 20 to noon, sometimes 10 to noon. And the doctor and whole medical personnel shuts down the hospital and they go to have lunch. They do need to have lunch. It's not a very easy job, I know. And they have lunch one and a half hours till 1.30. That's just how it is. There is really nothing you can do. So you need to go and have lunch also. And people find their ways all around the hospital. There are a few places you can go and uh, grab something to eat, maybe have some coffee. And that's it. Then you come back. These nine, nine doctors, they will take you at least two days. Because besides doctors which you have to visit, and some doctors are really easy. You walk to the office, there is nobody there, you give them paper, sign, gone. And there are some uh, where you have nine, you know, you, you have 40, 30 people, and uh, you have to get through. Then you also have to give blood, because they have to check, check for infection and a few other things, and they have to make medical assessment. Uh, that will not be ready on the same day. Maybe it can be done on the same day, but I suggest they don't. They, they, they probably will not be done in one day. So you will give the blood and then next day or day after that, you will come for the results and then you will have that quest sticking. So two day quest for sure, at least two days, maybe three days, I don't know. I don't know right now it's busy time for them or not, but what I saw, it was incredibly busy time for them. Uh, then, after you've done all of that, and you got all the papers, all the signatures, you turn it in to the same person who gave you that form. They will schedule their final examination. I don't think it's really final examination. It's basically they sum it up, probably put some stamp on it, and give it to you. And it's usually at some time later. If you don't start early, it's going to be very difficult. That's pretty much the whole uh, process which you have to go through. And I can tell you, Judging that one has to pay $140 monthly for this government insurance, I would strongly consider taking private insurance because I think it's going to be hectic. Also, everything is pretty much free for you after you got this particular uh, insurance. Getting to the doctor is not going to be that free. I think you're going to have to invest some time and some effort. And obviously... There are some other doctors there that are not, there isn't one doctor. There are many doctors of the same specialty and maybe there are different queues, different lines, maybe different virtual lines. I don't understand the whole operation, how it works. I've been only to one building, which I walked all the way through. But I would consider getting some private insurance and perhaps if you're not a very sick person, if you don't get sick often, it may be a good idea not even to have that kind of insurance because this is... Uh, difficult. That's it. I'm Vas. Welcome to my channel again. Sign up, leave some comments. Good luck.